Is there a, uh, an attempt here to, by making this announcement, to get in front of where um, James is talking about and also people like Bob Catter are talking about, which is a foreign interference conversation, that essentially the softer way to deal with the same issues or to come at it from a different way is to talk about free speech. Um, but if that's not going to get engaged with, then, uh, well, foreign in influence is what he's going to get investigated and that's going to be far more uncomfortable for them. Yeah, the government is is concerned about uh, the influence of, of, of China and our universities. And this inquiry, as announced by, by Minister Tien, is, a, as James Patterson said, a welcome first step. But it's up to these universities to, to realise that they're at a tipping point, if not they've gone over the tipping point, in terms of their relationship with Australia. These universities are supposed to be these, these bastions of academic excellence but in fact, they've become bastions of how to toady up to, to, to China in some instances, and that has limited freedom of speech. So I think it's up to the universities to realise this is a wake-up call because uh, the next step, you know, if, if Parliament, and we have an inquiry from, from a committee that I sit on, which is the Education and Employment Committee in the Senate, or the Joint Committees, uh, that won't be pretty reading uh, for those universities. So this is a massive wake-up call for them. Now, how did we become so twisted as a joint that we don't see direct correlation between decisions of government and the consequences of hundreds of cases, six weeks lockdown, and today 29 people dying? Instead, they're most likely in internet land will be more people trying to find a way to move on than, and then sort of trying to turn this into and trying to pretend that accountability for the decisions in and around coronavirus is the new version of the Julia Gillard conspiracy theories. Like, like come on, this, 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 this ain't like those dots. There's a straight line. Oh, there's a total straight line here. And what we're seeing with the left is this, this blurring of that straight line, uh, that they, they don't want to be accountability. You just look at the difference between how left-wing governments and the federal government have treated coronavirus. Uh, Scott Morrison, we have an inquiry that James Patterson is deputy chair of. Uh, the government have only two members on that inquiry. It's been going since basically the beginning of coronavirus, calling all sorts of people before it. In Queensland, my home state, uh, Labor aren't having a budget this year. Uh, Parliament is barely sitting. Uh, there is a parliamentary inquiry, but it's got government members, Labor government members who dominate it. Uh, they, they're trying to, to make sure that whatever happened with coronavirus wasn't the fault of the government. It's the fault of someone else. You mentioned Peter Beattie before. Daniel Andrews uh, has, is perfecting this Peter Beattie approach of this sorry, not sorry approach to public policy. And you're right, Peter Beattie, when he stuffed things up, people didn't die. But in Victoria, Correct. people are dying because of a failure of public policy. And not just a general public policy, a decision of that Labor government to award a contract, and I'll be very careful so the lawyers don't start pressing the red button here, <laughs> to award contracts that tick certain boxes, whether they're union boxes or social diversity boxes, uh, to make sure that the Labor mates were happy. And what is a direct result of that government decision? Well, people dying in Victoria, and you've got a recreation of, of, of Berlin in 1961, where you have a city that is devastated by a decision of the government, and no one is being held to account. About one rule for them, one rule for everyone else. And again, the wants to, you know, that eradication works for a virus, but doesn't for a bushfire. Um, you know, one person taking a break is completely acceptable, another is a disgrace, and you must hand in your gun and your badge. That's the whole. That's the whole point here. Is that look? I have no doubt. And I said this the other night when a caller was really rough about Daniel Andrews on a very personal level. This is a bloke with a wife, kids, family. No doubt he is absolutely smashed. Right? No question. Right? The people reporting on this are smashed. Let alone the people making the decisions. But you know who's also smashed? The nurses who are having to deal with this. Yeah. The small businesses yeah. that are trying to work out. Oh, geez, how do I, how do I sack this person? And what do I? And how? Do, and they wake up every day. So the idea that sort of there's one person being unfairly targeted when the pain 
extends everywhere, including to 25% of people in Victoria who live by themselves. Mm. They're not allowed to have a single guest over. Those people would be going through an equal level of rack and ruin. So, again, I think what, what, what uh, the other senator said was that James was completely correct about you know, the political class taking care of each other. Everyone else, come on, hey, whoa, whoa. Yeah, totally. I speak to you from, from Cairns. Mm. I'm in Warren Entry's office tonight. Yeah. Cairns has been completely gutted by coronavirus. The impact upon the tourism industry, uh, you've got people who are going to be losing their homes and their businesses because of coronavirus, and yet you have this this lefty colorama that, that's happening, and Mike Baird, quite frankly, can, he can take a, a long walk off a short pier as far as I'm concerned, because the political class should stop being a bunch of sooks. Mm. You go into politics to make decisions and make lives better for people, and what Daniel Andrews has done in Victoria has done the exact opposite, and that guy should be held to account and people from, from my party should be holding him to account rather than giving him an alibi. Because I can see the damage that's happening here in Cairns and it's across Queensland because of Labor incompetence and Labor starting to use coronavirus as an excuse for their incompetence. Yep, see, oh. even the lights go out on you like that. <laughs> <laughs> even the lights, they, maybe Warren Inch realised that you were on my show and he was going, oh, I thought he was talking to KG. I was fine <laughs> yeah. if he was talking to the daytime people, no, but I'm the back. nighttime I'm people, back. off Call you go. Call the plug. Call the plug. <laughs> yeah, all right, we're going to take a quick break. <laughs> we'll refire the generators up and all the rest of it. We'll just do the clapper. All right, the light's back on now in Cairns. So who do you think is going to be better on China and why does that matter for Australia? Trump is going to be better, it's, and it's because China is a bully and they are the greatest threat to the rules-based order that, 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 that the world is seeing at the moment. And Trump, I don't want to call Trump a bully, but he's what I call a very exuberant and very strong character. <laughs> and he knows when you deal with bullies, you don't give them foot rubs, you don't give them sort of shoulder massages, you've got to stand up to them. And that's why having Trump rather than Biden... Biden isn't a foreign affairs hawk. He's like a foreign affairs budgerigar. You know, he's just, just, a, just, he's just a tweety bird. He's just going to tweet away and, 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 and want to be loved. Trump will stand up to China. And that is better for us here in Australia because we need to make sure there is a coalition of the willing to stand up against China. And we need to make sure we've got a strong president in the White House to help us with that because we can't do it by ourselves. We need other people standing shoulder to shoulder with us. When the local government elections were taking place uh, during the first round of the pandemic, which of course was ridiculous, there were plenty of people who didn't vote. We learned last week that these people will now not be fined. What do you think is going to happen in and around the actual holding of a physical election in just a few weeks' time in Queensland, while simultaneously being essentially virus-free? If people don't get fined for not voting, then who's that going to help? If people are allowed to essentially say, meh, I'm not going to turn up, if they're going to open postal ballots early, as was one of the suggestions being made by a former speaker, before 6pm, what's that going to do for the process which is coming our way in a few weeks' time? Oh, you've got to give Labor 10 out of 10 for, for rorting the system. <laughs> These guys are just... They've written, they've written the book on how to, to rort elections. So before the 2017 election, just as a reminder to listeners, uh, they changed the voting system from optional preferential to compulsory preferential. They've banned developers, you know, those, those terrible developers from giving money to, to political parties here, here in Queensland. But our unions, unions can support Labor uh, hand over fist. And we've got this coming election coming up where Labor once again have changed the rules by, for example, I'll give you a classic example. On polling day, you put the signs up around the polling booth. We, the Liberal National Party, can put four signs up. Yeah, OK, right. Labor can put four signs up. Yeah, that's OK. I suppose that's fair. Um, we're, we're treated equally. But every union, and there are 26 of them, mm -hmm. can put up four signs. So when you turn up to the polling booth, um, you're going to have four signs that say vote one LNP and you're going to have 100 signs that say vote one Labor. Correct. This is just, a, this is the greatest electoral gerrymander in the history of Australia since, since the Rum Rebellion in terms of trying to wart a democratic process. And guess what? Crickets from mainstream media about this absolute 
aggregates. Going into Queensland in a few weeks' time, what, if anything, do these numbers mean when you put together those state numbers of 5148 in favour of the LNP? Well, what it shows up here in Queensland is we've got to remind uh, voters that Labor had the highest unemployment, the lowest business confidence, the highest business failures, all before coronavirus came along. So Palaszczuk has got a very, very weak government that she's leading. ScoMo has been leading a very strong government that's been d delivering for, for people. And people are going to, going to make a decision, not just based on how leaders have dealt with coronavirus, but how they've acted as leader throughout that term of government. And Palaszczuk has been a very poor, poor Premier since 2015, and that is going to be held against her when polling day comes. Bold prediction for the weekend. I think the Victorian Health Minister will resign this week.